process. Uh, standards once uh, uh, prepared are always uh, uh, subject to further improvements through amendments, revisions, and therefore uh, we should be open to any kind of discussion and suggestion. So all the participants I would uh, suggest should uh, participate wholeheartedly, uh, give their inputs, uh, and learn from the, process, uh, the 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 experts, and also give their inputs uh, based on their own. Uh, uh, experience and exposure and work and uh, R&D in this area and those who are desirous of contributing in the standardization in the field of conveyor belts uh, already there are uh, around 70 standards already formulated by the committee 76 standards 46 product standards and 25 standards uh, uh, on test methods and uh, different aspects have been uh, formulated so uh, we can review various uh, uh, out of the 76 standards, create new standards which are required because India is on the path of rapid development and we may require, uh, first of all, uh, standards on all remaining aspects if some are left and upgrade the standards uh, to meet the, uh, the, the requirement of the industry. We see today that uh, none of the important standards uh, industry today can work without conveyor belts and therefore this technology has to excel to support uh, the industrialization process. With that, I once again thank all the participants and especially the speakers, my own colleagues, and uh, wish the event uh, all the success. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for your uh, inspiring inaugural address. Uh, your presence has been a great source of motivation for uh, all of us always. Thank you so much, sir. Now, uh, we will move on to our technical uh, session. Our technical session will feature some of the best minds in the industry who will share their knowledge and insights on various aspects of fire resistant conveyor belts for underground mines. Each presentation will be 20 minutes long and we will remind you when the time is almost up. During the presentation, you can write your questions in the chat box and we will take them up during the question answer session. In this uh, row, our first speaker, Sri uh, Apur Bhagavad, sir, uh, Chairman, Conveyor Belt Sectional Committee, PGD-40. Uh, sir has vast experience uh, in the mining. Uh, he is currently uh, heading the engineering and coal mining uh, division, uh, NTPC uh, headquarter, Ranchi. Previously, uh, he has served in head material handling group, Coal as fuel limestone gypsum handling plant of Corporate Engineering Noida. Sir has experience in uh, turbine uh, maintenance, uh, CORBA, STPS, and in the field of uh, quality assurance, uh, developing fielding inspection uh, methodology and assurance of quality for construction of first supercritical boilers in India along with uh, auxiliaries of fans, air preheaters, coal handling plants, as handling plants, etc. Uh, he has experience in uh, corporate quality assurance, developing indigenous vendors for supercritical uh, boiler components, planning for uh, quality assurance, developing inspection methodology, problem solving, and overseas uh, inspections. Uh, engineering in uh, material handling area, uh, improvement of technical specification for coal handling plant and ice handling plant, development of technical specification for handling, storage and transportation of limestone and gypsum, policy development for uh, sourcing of limestone and offtake of gypsum for uh, FGD plants. There has also experience in engineering in uh, coal mining. Uh, improvement in technical specification for coal handling plant, sustainability measures in mining and transportation of coal, to uh, name a few. Now I request, uh, sir, to uh, please share your presentation for this technical session. Apoor Bhagavad, sir. Sir, uh, Thank you. Uh, thank you, VV Singh Ji, uh, Member Secretary, and respected uh, Sanjay Pansa, DDG Standardization 2 BIS, Sri Rajiv Ranjan Singh Ji, 
साइंटिस्ट एफ एंड एड ऑफ टीजीडी एक्चुअली माय प्रेजेंटेशन इज प्रिपेयर्ड बेस्ड ऑन फिर इन अ सिंपल वे एंड टू गिव ऑल द ऑल द डिग्नेटरीज प्रेजेंट हियर टू गिव अ फील व्हाट टाइप ऑफ यूज इज देयर इन कोल माइनिंग एंड आल्सो इन पावर प्लांट सो आई विल स्टार्ट माय प्रेजेंटेशन this presentation contains uh, main 30 uh, main 10 10 points and uh, one by one i i shall go first is tap conveyor everybody is not everybody they knows what is uh, tap conveyor is next what what are the latest uh, developments in uh, tap conveyors uh, one is uh, types of belts steel cord conveyor textile conveyor belts solid open etc etc and uh, uh, load rolling resistance super load rolling resistance these are to reduce the uh, friction and thereby reduction in power requirement and some uh, another thing uh, are being uh, incorporated in conveyors nowadays one is well grip protection system that is x ray based system one attachment is put and based on that it gives the condition of the belt uh, this is uh, latest development next is digitalization digitalization is the buzz word and in digitalization aspect also ntpc is uh, going to do something but it is uh, yet to be implemented implemented uh, or the thing is that digital twins uh, are virtual replica of physical object object and with this help we can you, we can increase conveyor efficiency with digital conveyor monitoring and uh, optimize optimize the system next one is pipe conveyors pipe conveyors a uh, few pipe pipe conveyors also uh, have been uh, in, uh, have been uh, incorporated in ntpc uh, system what is pipe conveyor i just saw uh, pipe conveyor is uh, uh, just uh, similar to tap conveyor but one thing is that after a, a few distance this uh, trap portion is made in the form of pipe and uh, i'll just show my cursor is visible this yes 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 sir yes this uh, material is paid here and uh, after some approach distance it is uh, some approach distance this pipe is formed and uh, this is transition distance and this is pipe bell conveyor then again transition takes place and it is discharged here and this is return side uh, what is the advantages of top conveyor one is uh, the material is content within the uh, pipe so it is it material is not exposed in rain and sun next is layout is very flexible it can negotiate tight curves and one thing is that it can it can transport materials in two way means in the top side material from pit point up to discharge point and in return point also uh, some material can be transported to the original point and next is that most important is that it is very uh, environment friendly so that dust nuisance is completely avoided and what are the demerits one is it requires special design and uh, cost is higher cost and uh, it can not be used uh, for higher lump sizes and next one is that for same same belt with this total belt total jo capacity requirement hai it becomes lower and lower next is just i have shown one picture of uh, pipe conveyor installed in NP ntpc next one is sandwich belt conveyor sandwich belt conveyor what is sandwich belt conveyor uh, in sandwich belt conveyor suppose this is a trap person and in top also one another belt is put and placed here and in between these two belts material is placed so uh, so that material does not slip back and uh, and uh, and transported in a smooth way um, what is the major advantage of material sandwich conveyor that it can uh, transport material in a stiff 
angle up to 90 degree. This is just the scheme of a, just a picture of a sandwich conveyor. Uh, I just told advantage, major advantage, it can go up to 90 degree and high capacity, higher capacity is possible and it can uh, transport higher lump size. And what are the disadvantages that more mechanical components and very fine material can not be transported. Next, I just shown here, this is coal mine. And uh, in the coal mine, suppose trucks are, many trucks are ne needed to transport the coal from the bottom or to the top. Or, or in that case, sandwich can conveyors can uh, be employed here, here uh, to transport the material from bottom up to the top. Maybe coal or OB. OB means overburden. Next is rope conveyor. Rope conveyor is uh, uh, composite of rope and conveyor. Ropes are used here, and corrugated sides are uh, are uh, employed to avoid spillage of the material and it is the perfect for challenging terrain and this is the picture of rope conveyor uh, now i'll uh, tell about the advantages and disadvantages advantages is high availability low operational experience experiences and high environmental friendly here also you see material can be transported from one place to another place without much degradation of material for the construction work and also uh, much dust nuisance. And what are the disadvantages? Disadvantages are high initial cost and scarcity in vendor. We have a search for in India and only one vendor. We could search till date. Still, we are doing feasibility. So uh, now we'll say what are the different materials are being transported in NTBC. In NTBC, mainly four types of materials are transported. Uh, one is coal, and next one is gas. These are for power plants mainly. And next one is Navajet, uh, Navajet FGD, means uh, FGD, uh, desulfurization plant, desulfurization plant in that limestone and is required. And gypsum is byproduct, and for transportation of gypsum, uh, limestone and gypsum also, NTBC has been using this converse. Next one is typical whistle. Uh, I will give one feel of the power plant. In power plant, close it, coal is transported in two places, two ways mainly. One is uh, wagon tipler, and next one is tag of art. Tag of art is known uh, most to the most people. And uh, what is in tag of art is that one rail is there, and below the rail line, uh, conveyor are placed, and through upper uh, coal is conveyed. And in, in case of uh, wagon tipler, it is uh, rotary type. Means here also, uh, here also coal is uh, unloaded through wagon tipler, and it goes and goes to through series of conveyors. It is sent to stock file, and after that it goes to power plant in a boiler. These are all conveyors, and this is final feeding bunker boiler, bunker <coughs> conveyor. So go to next page. Some scheme. Uh, I, I think most uh, people know this. This is unloading point. It is conveyed to crusher house, and when crusher through tipis, it goes to stack pile, goes top pile, and uh, from tipis, it uh, two ways are there. One directly it can go to bunker, and one is for stack stacking purpose. It go to stock pile, and whenever uh, to direct path, coal is not available from stock pile. It is being used. This is typical layout of a power plant. This is wagon tipler of stack offer through series of conveyors. It goes to Kassar house. From Kassar house, it comes directly to the boiler. Directly to the boiler. Boiler coal bunkers. Or in the indirect part, after the Kassar, it goes to a stockpile. And in the uh, with the help of uh, stacker reclaimer, it again to the conveyors, it's sent to the uh, boiler uh, up to the uh, junction point and from there up to the boiler. This is a typical scheme of a of series of converse in a power plant. And this is wagon tipler I just told. This is uh, this is uh, 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 means uh, table and table can be rotated and hold the one guard one by one. It can be uh, tipple and uh, tipple and it is sent to other side on in the offer. Uh, apron feeder to the, 
uh, to the with the help of haplon feeder it is it goes uh, to the conveyor and through series of conveyor it goes to the boiler first casser house then stock file as bypass arrangement then then to boiler either either through direct path or through stock file as i told earlier what are the design margins in power plant generally conveyor margin is 10 percent crusher is 10 percent pedal feeder pedal feeders are uh, are put below the track of art, their margin is 50% and by visiting feeder, it is 10%. Next, I will come to the mine question. Typical, typical layout of a mine of our, of our Pagribaro de coal mine. Total mine conveyor length is uh, uh, approximately 21 kilometers. I will show you in two parts. First, first part that it is uh, it is primary sizer and primary sizing unit through uh, shiftable conveyor. It comes to secondary sizing unit and from secondary uh, sizing units to OLBC means online conveyor, bell conveyor. It comes to stockpile and from stockpile in the second part, it goes to the up to the uh, railway siding and that I will show in the next next slide so next slide from the stockpile here and through series of conveyors it goes up to up to uh, railway siding and what are the speciality in this antiphysis of river drill conveyor one is it is elevated road <coughs> so that elephants and other animals are not disturbed and even go and uh, smoothly uh, travel uh, through below the Converse. Next, dust separation systems are there, firefighting systems are there, double stream conveyor in owner's part. Now, one of the longest conveyor, 21 kilometer approx, including MDO part. Next, uh, just one picture is there. You see how high is there, and below the uh, conveyors, these elephants also can pass. And this is a very environmentally, very clean, clean way of transporting. Next, I will just give a feel about the what what arrangement is done at uh, at uh, railway siding. You see, TP10, TP10 means last conveyor. Why the conveyor system I have sold, I have shown in the previous slide. And after TP10, uh, some due to some uh, due to some uh, problem of uh, land acquisition, what is NTPC doing from TP10 up to the siding? Uh, maybe 500 meter, it is being transported to through uh, through truck. But what we are going to do again? One conveyor we are uh, installing, and our commissioning date is October 2023. And from there, their RLS will be there, means a, a rapid loading system. And this portion of uh, railway tracks are also are being laid so that this uh, that up to railway loading uh, all things will be done in a mechanized way and smooth smoothly and with without zero with zero dust emission and this is the uh, presently some ward falls are uh, prepared three ward falls are uh, are constructed uh, to load it manually through payloader but after uh, october 2023 as planned it will be done through in a most mechanized way now, following new technology, now I'll go what are few new technologies that are being inducted in NDPC. Five conveyors, I told that uh, since previous we are installing five conveyors, online coal analysis are, I think first time in coal industry, we are going to install in our Talai Pali coal mine, coal for dust suppression system. It can, it can catch very, very minute particles up to three, four micron even. Then solar panels or conveyor system uh, as a as an as a sustainability effort, we are going to install solar panels uh, on our conveyor belt. Then rope conveyors, all of course, it is we are uh, we are doing feasibility study. But here still that main problem is that only one conveyor and being in government sector, only one vendor and being uh, in government sector that is becoming roadblock till till date. Ne next static compensator for embark compensation of long cable what is there since our 
converts are very long. Uh, so uh, they are uh, for compression, compensation of the um, uh, reactive current, we are going to install MBAR. Then bucket elevators installed in MGD projects. These are few and oh, few things are also uh, are under specification stage, uh, uh, just like Intelli roller, that uh, weighing of the coal is possible in the belt itself and uh, itself. Then I'll just give uh, some uh, picture means how, uh, what are the uh, status of installation uh, of pipe converts in NTPC, in a, a, a NTCL value, we have already installed. North Karampura already supplied under direction, Kirandari already supplied and under direction by LNT, then Talcher uh, already under consideration. Next, Pattatu also envisaged for transportation of as first time in India and very few places in the world also. They are we will transport as in environment friendly way and through pipe conveyor, conveyor through pipe conveyors. Then Chakti Badiyar too, they are also under tendering to into 1800 TPH uh, by Converse. Next, I uh, will give uh, some uh, some major codes we are uh, using, IS11592, IS1891, and these all are ISS and among, and uh, along with all many ISS we, are, we use in our specification. Next, along with IS, we also use the help of international specification. One major such code is SIMA, Convair Belt Manufacturing Association, then ISO 15236, then CAN, CSA, Five Performance and ANSI Static Requirements for Convair Belting, then ISO 340, Convair Belts Laboratory Scale Flammability Characteristics, Requirements and Test Methods. That's all, sir. Thank you all dignitaries uh, for patients listening. Thank you all. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and expertise in the field of conveyor belt, sir. Uh, this is a highly technical loaded uh, presentation. Uh, I think uh, technical people will appreciate more this. Thank you so much, sir. Thank our, you very uh, much. Thank you. Our next speaker is uh, Sri Eugene Paisley, sir, who will uh, share his presentation. Uh, and in his presentation, he will show the differences in the current IS3181-1992 and the new draft Indian standard on conveyor belts, fire resistant conveyor belting for underground mines and such other hazardous applications. Uh, in brief, uh, I would like to inform you all about uh, Yugen Paisley, sir. Uh, he is the uh, expert in personal capacity and member of Conveyor Belt Section Committee PGD 40. Yugen Paisley, sir, is an expert in the field of conveyor belts manufacturing and uh, technical aspects. Uh, he has more than 40 years of work experience in manufacturing and uh, technical aspects. Uh, he worked in SRF Industries Fabrics for seven years, Conveyor Belt Fabrics and RFL Dipping, uh, and also worked in Fenner Conveyor bel uh, Belting, uh, where he worked 33 years, long 33 years, in the field of PVC fire resistant conveyor belt uh, manufacturing. He also worked in uh, international conveyor belts. Uh, he is a, a long time BIS member and contributing uh, in standard standard formulation activities are BIS. Now I uh, request uh, sir to please share uh, his presentation. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this uh, webinar on uh, conveyor belt technical aspects. Now I will present my I will share it now. Yes, sir, please. Uh, 
Are you able to see my screen? No, sir. It's not visible. Uh, please select the share option and then you uh, share your presentation. You can uh, up your uh, share your screen option. Please try to uh, share. If you are not able to share, then we will uh, share your presentation from this. Uh, want to share the application, no? Yeah, you, you, you choose the option share option. So you click in the share. Yeah. And you will have the option for uh, a screen sharing option. So you don't, don't, uh -huh. select the, don't select the application, select, uh, select the screen. Complete screen, yeah. Yeah, I will send it. You select the screen, then you will be able to uh, share your screen. No, it is okay. No, sir, it's not visible. Screen. That you select screen one. Actually, there will be the option. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now it is working. When you select screen one, you have to also press the share button at the bottom. Yeah, now you are uh, able to see, no? No, no, not visible. Yeah, yes, sir, yes, sir. It's working. Okay, yes. Go ahead. Yeah, please. Now it's, it is working. It's... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, now I am giving you the brief history of uh, IS-3181 about uh, how it was uh, intro intro introduced into the our, uh, Indian standard. In 1982 and earlier, in 1950, there was a big major fire in uh, British coal. So the government decided to have a conveyor belt it should have a fire resistant and uh, it should not catch fire after the removal of the fire. So they drafted a uh, standard that is NCB 158 in 1988. And before we were using the NCB 158. And in uh, 1982, this uh, BS 3289 1982 was released. In 1990, the fire resistant conveyor belt uh, standard with the propane, uh, that is uh, high energy propane burner test, was included in the IS, uh, BS 3289 in 1990. And then we adopted this uh, BS 3289 in 1990 into the Indian standards. And this was in the uh, name of IS 3181 1992. So this system, this standard is still going on and we are in the process of uh, revising the standard to our latest uh, international level standard. In 2000, uh, 2005, BS 3289 has revised the standard with the fire, all the other, other properties, other uh, specifications are uh, similar to what we have uh, drafted and circulated among the members. So this standard and uh, the revised uh, the revision we were proposing, all both are same, nearly same. Uh, earlier, uh, BS 3289-1990, the standard was up to type 8, and there is no type 10, 12, and 15 included in the system standard. Now it is uh, in 2005, they have included type 10, type 12, and type 15. And the fire resistant test, uh, uh, the large scale uh, high energy propane burner test has been removed, and the mid scale propane burner test has been increased, uh, included into the system. 
so that is what uh, we are also doing in the uh, proposed uh, revision of IS 3181 standard. This is about the brief history about this 3181-1992. Sir, you, you also um, move the slides. Slides is not moving. Uh -huh. Hello? Slides is not moving, sir. Slides. You also change the slides, sir. Slides, so? Slides is not moving, sir. Slide is stagnant. You need to press the slide. Slide is not moving. Yes, slide is not moving. Now it is working? Hello? No, it's not. No, it's not working. It is not moving actually. Please put it in the slides so then you move actually. It's, it's not moving actually. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now it's moving. Now it is moving? Yes, sir. Hello? Yes, sir. It's yeah, moving. it is yeah. moving now. Yeah. In 19, uh, yes, 3181-1992, class 4, table 1, that is uh, belt designation and uh, other properties is there in table 1. That is, belt designation was up to type 8. And the revised proposed uh, draft, we have included type 10, type 12, and type 15. And the belt elongation at break is 17% in the longitudinal and 18% in traverse direction, that is warp and weft, up to type 4. In type 5, they have increased to type, uh, that is warp direction 15% and weft direction 18%. For other types, there is no specification uh, stated that. But in the proposed uh, draft, the belt elongation at break has for up to type 5, we have 10% in the warp direction and 18% in the traverse direction. For all other types, the belt is no specification in the warp direction, that is longitudinal direction. And the traverse direction, 18% has been included so that the st standard will be up to the mark of the international standard. So that way the draft is there. The next slide. Class 5 and 6. Belt elongation at uh, elongation, belt length and width tolerance. Specification, there is no table to clearly indicate the tolerances for the different types of uh, length and other things. So uh, we have included a table in uh, two and three to specify the length and the width tolerance. In class seven, IS 3181-1992, belt thickness and cover thickness are not given, not specified in the standard. But as a given in 2005, it was given as an amendment in the standard, IS 3181-1992. In the proposed uh, draft, we have included that amendment into that uh, standard itself so that it will look a full uh, fledged standard. It is there in the now table number four. Belt cover properties are not given in the IS 3181-1992, that present system, present standard. In the draft, we have included the belt cover properties for PVC and rubber grades, which are used in the underground application, has been given in table number five. That is the only uh, major change we have given in the draft. These are all based on the members' uh, contribution and the members' uh, uh, ideas I advise given by the members. In IS 3181, the edge addition and properties of the belt. Class 13.2, edge addition. Edge addition property for solid oven belts are not clearly defined and was not possible for the solid oven belt. So we made a definition in the new draft Adequate addition should be between the uh, edge strip and the edge of the belt is normally be checked by visual and manual inspection. Edge addition is not possible for solid oven PVC belt. We have clearly indicated that the PVC belt is a solid oven, so it is not possible to test the edge addition of the uh, uh, belts. That way we have given very clearly so that there is no Confusion in the later stage between the supplier and the customer. 
sampling and testing of bells in is 31982 uh, 31981 plus 17 sampling and testing is not clearly mentioned which are the tests to be carried out uh, carried out as a type test some of the tests we are uh, still doing it as type tests or the drum friction test mid uh, that is uh, high energy propane burner test and the trophability these are the three as uh, uh, type test we are following now that same thing has been included in the draft to clearly specify that these are the thing as a type test to be done agreement between the purchaser and the manufacturer this was clearly defined, defined in the new uh, draft in the class 16.1 16.3 and 17 that is three tests for the drum friction mid, uh, mid scale propane burner test and trophability these three are the type test as we have mentioned clearly in the draft itself trophability uh, properties of the bell in is 31 81 1992 trophability test is not included in standard there is no trophability test in the standard itself but uh, customers are doing the test as per the uh, dgms requirement and also for the other uh, government mine governments uh, mines uh, standards trophability is carried out as a type test but this is not there uh, reflecting in the standard is 3181 1992 so in the proposed uh, is 3181 draft 2023 class 16 has been included with the specification and the test for the trophability is given clearly fire resistant property gallery test IS 3181 1992 class 15 that is high energy propane burner test is given in class 15.3 large scale gallery test it is a large scale gallery test so it requires the sample of uh, sample size of 2 meters and the full width of the sample tested in british coal or any other institution testing in the test house having this provision is done in India. Some of the test uh, houses are having this provision in India. Earlier, this was not there. So that we have been testing in coal, British coal or in the Yardley, uh, Yardley Associates. They were doing this test for, uh, uh, for us. This, this test is introduced in uh, BS3289 in 1990. That was adapted into the 3181, 1992. Uh, introduction of uh, Indian standard. The proposed change in the circular uh, draft is mid-scale mid propane burner test has been introduced as part of the uh, this is uh, introduced in BS3289 2005 for all the belt types specification and the testing procedure is given or introduced into this uh, draft. This as per 3289 and 2005, there is international other standards are also there for this mid-scale propane burner test. But in India, I don't know any whether you're having only Fanner and uh, ICL are having this facility to test this mid-scale propane burner test so that they can, since they are exporting belts to the European countries and the other cities also, they are following this mid-scale burner propane burner test so it is uh, mandatory to test this uh, uh, belts in house this is some comparison between this gallery test that is uh, la high energy propane burner test and the proposed uh, draft what is the difference some difference i am um, giving it the gallery test is in the the high energy propane is done in the open area that is the gallery size of around 15 or we require a area area of 20 meters by 4 meters width <coughs> area with uh, gallery of 2 into 2 meters and 15 meters gallery is required the sample size is 2 meters with the full width of the belt and the maximum 1200 mm Number of tests are two for equal cover thickness and for three for unequal cover thickness samples. Belts. 
in the revised standard we have given laboratory model uh, testing procedure that is the mid scale propane gurney test it is a laboratory model so a small room is enough to test this uh, fire property gallery size is 46 into 46 into 167 cm sample size is 23 cm into 150 cm a very small sample is enough to test this property with uh, very much accurate very accurate uh, results will be got from this uh, tests number of test specimen will be two as in the earlier also and for equal cover thickness and for unequal cover thickness three test samples will be carried out the severe severity of this uh, high energy propane stated in is 3181 1992 is very less burning time is only 10 minutes assessment of the test is specimen is visually and physically measurement is done on the length of the undamaged portion is measured physically and it is reported after glow time after removal of the flame how much the glowing how much the flame is glow from the bell is noted and that also reported in the report but in the uh, proposed change in the circulate, that is as per uh, mid-scale propane burners, the severity is very high and very stringent. The accuracy of the results are more very, 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 very high, very high comparing to the high energy propane burner stated in IS3181-1992. This burning time is of the belt specimen is 50 minutes. Assessment of the test is one is the specimen visually and physically measurement. Maximum average rise time, uh, temperature rise is measured. Determination of the length of the belt consumed is during the test by mass is uh, calculated. The pass criteria in the high energy propane test stated in IS3181 is removal of flame from the test specimen. No glow should be seen from the belt specimen. Minimum 250 mm undamaged portion of the belt specimen should be there after the test. That is the criteria, pass criteria for high energy propane burner test. But in the mid scale propane test, test sample undamaged portion is greater than 600 mm due to fire is acceptable. Or if it is less than half a 600 mm, minimum greater than 50 mm undamaged portion with the exhaust gas average temperature rise is less than 140 degree the length of the consumed length consumed for by fire by mass is less than 1250 mm is the uh, pass criteria for the mid scale propane this is very very stringent very difficult to pass the belt specimen all the belts will not pass this test but in the high energy propane uh, every belt I think <laughs> all the bills will be passing this test. This is a galleric test comparison of the flame. You will be able to see the large scale propane burner that is high energy propane burner test. The flame is sent, uh, placed in, in the center of the belt with and the trestle. The flame is not coming to the top at all, or the top uh, face or top face of the belt. It's up to the only on the bottom side it uh, fires, but it does not come to the top. But in the mid scale propane burner, the flame is flame nozzles are on the sides. It gets the both side of the face, both face top and bottom, both face are ignited, and this burning is on both sides it will both side of the specimen is uh, seen very well on the picture itself you can see the gallery size of the mid scale propane burner test is very small it can occupy a room in a small room on the corner of the small room so this is very easy to conduct the test and any test house or the manufacturing house can accommodate this uh, test procedure very easily
So the, the conclusion of this uh, presentation will be the revised uh, standard acceptable and matches the international standards for built in underground main usages. The mid scale propane burners can be incorporated into the Indian standard IS3181 as already is done in BS3289 2005. What we are having this 3181 is the adoption of 3289 that we have to keep it in mind. And then this can be incorporated into the uh, this uh, revised draft can be uh, approved after the stakeholders meeting we have next month, so that we will discuss and then uh, have a final conclusion on this approval of this standard draft draft standard. That is all uh, for this presentation, and thank you very much for all of you here. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, uh, for sharing uh, the insights uh, in the subject. Uh, this is very uh, critical. We are uh, revising our IS 3181 1992, and you have very beautifully uh, presented here the differences uh, between the Indian standard that is IS 3181 1992 and the draft standard of the same. Yeah. Thank you. Sir. As you uh, rightly mentioned, uh, we are planning to have a physical meeting with uh, DGMS stakeholders. So, so we are in the uh, pipeline. So yeah. we will uh, meet soon as the meeting will finalize. And here I would like to request to uh, all the participants uh, because many uh, leading manufacturers uh, have joined this uh, webinar. So uh, here my request is that uh, please share your comments in books. Uh, in email ID pgd at the rate bis.gov.in and also express your interest so that uh, you may also be the part uh, of the final uh, member of BIS for revising this uh, Indian standard in the conveyor belts. And you also uh, be the member of uh, this conveyor belt section committee PGD section. So uh, leading manufacturers have this uh, kind of privilege. Uh, for this, you need to uh, send your interest uh, to us at the uh, PGD at the red BIS at the and uh, you can uh, share your message in chat box also. And if you drop an email, then uh, we will uh, take up the deal. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you once again. Uh, now, uh, we have our next speaker, uh, Dr. Raj Kumar, uh, Director, Indian Rubber Manufacturer Research Association, IRMR in Mumbai. Uh, Sir has uh, over 25 years of experience in research and development in the field of rubber and allied technology and uh, actively involved in indigenous of, uh, indigenization of rubber products, uh, truly contributing uh, for Make in India and Atmir Bhar Mission. He is a uh, government nominated expert member uh, on Committee for Circular Economy in tire and rubber recycling industry and also served as expert member in uh, formulation of uh, national rubber policy. Uh, he is the chairman of BIS uh, PCD29, Committee on Test Methods for Rubber and Rubber Products and BIS uh, PCD Committee and of Test of Toys. He is also a uh, member of various committees including ISO TC35, ASTM, BIS, PCD33, TD7, MED17, PCD28, etc. He is a member of various professional bodies like IRI, ASM, Quality Forum, RSDC, etc. He is an NBL lead assessor and uh, certified ISO 9001 auditor. He is recipient of several awards including ISO TC45 Long Service Award in 2019 and Fellow of Textiles Association of India. He has widely traveled uh, multiple uh, times of uh, various countries and he is very actively engaged in our uh, BIS standard formulation activities. Uh, now I request uh, Dr. Raj Kumar sir, please share your presentation sir. And he will uh, share in the uh, this uh, testing infrastructure in India and uh, conveyor belts by resistant uh, 
belting for under uh, ground mines and such other hazardous applications so uh, now i will request dr uh, rajkumar sir please share your presentation thank you sir uh, sri sanjay pan sir ddg standardization bis new delhi sri apurva ghosh uh, chairman pgd 40 sri rr singh ji scientist of head sri vijan ji sri vijay barapatre ji deputy director dgms and sri uh, vichitra veer singh ji and the expert uh, industry association friends others who are present in this webinar it gives me immense pleasure to be part of this particular standards reformulation related seminar webinar on this conveyor belt uh, in fact uh, mr yojan has already covered ma majority of the uh, my presentations the class by class and changes whatever he has uh, highlighted it is quite uh, you know enlarging you know enlightening and i am sure that like members would have been uh, you know updated with uh, the things are what is happening now at this moment actually so i am just going to brief about uh, some of the uh, you know facilities and what we are you know uh, supposed to think i hope my presentation is visible yeah okay yeah. thank you so uh, let me also give a small brief about irmra uh, which is uh, an autonomous body under ministry of commerce and industry dpiit uh, government of india and uh, it is established in 1958 which is 65 years old organization having state of art facilities which is created with the help of financial assistance from government of india and and of course we have been uh, trying to deliver the services including testing services to the indian rubber industries it's got a lot of experienced product testing laboratory which is recognized by bas for testing of various products which are mainly through the quality control orders and voluntary certifications which includes tires belts hoses gloves gaskets etc basically so this particular webinar is specifically for uh, conveyor belt that to 3181 that is uh, you know uh, fire resistance belts so i would like to ha share some of those uh, uh, facilities which are available at irmra usually these are highly specialized and available only with the limited laboratories especially with the manufacturers the third party laboratories are very limited uh, such facilities because of number of uh, requirements of testing as well as samples are less so whereas irmra is fully equipped uh, not only irmra for bis but also approved for BIA, dgms approved laboratory uh, i'm sure after my presentation uh, dgms uh, deputy director is going to present Uh, something more enlightening on this requirement for DGMS. So, IRMRI facilities are accredited by both BAS as well as DGMS, basically. So, these are our main activities, just for for uh, basically for research, the testing and certifications, and research and product development, and uh, also uh, you know uh, standard formulation comes as part and parcel of our service. so training and consultancy services also we do that basically so in the new standard formulations we also participate in uh, you know um, inter laboratory comparisons proficiency testing program across the globe and uh, we try to you know uh, contribute for uh, uh, the standard formulation not only in indian level but also at global level basically so basically you know uh, this is uh, special with reference to you know conveyor belt market is huge basically and india is uh, you know looking forward growth uh, in the US. and uh, economy of rubber industry is uh, always growing and uh, we are contributing to the trillion economy and conveyor belt growing requirements including for this uh, ntpc uh the enlightening you know uh, requirements was given by uh, our chairman sir and it's really uh, you know important that like you know we need to develop infrastructure for uh, testing and certifications basically so the conveyability is one of the important uh, portfolio where 
are absolutely highly hazardous area especially fire uh, prone area so fire resistance of conveyor belt is so important and equally we need to have test facilities to uh, augment these requirements basically so more important is that the safe and sustainable materials things like you know uh, in future which always we talk about uh, whenever we take a new development or the product development or even testing we need to see that like whether it is safe and also possible to have sustainable materials inside basically so whenever we talk about fire retardancy math and i think mr yojan already talked about that like basically a lot of clarity has been brought out during this particular upgraded version of 2023 and uh, so when we talk about conveyor belts made flame resistant by using special additives and chemicals we need to see that these additives and chemicals which are used is you know safe and environmentally you know uh, non health hazardous basically all such things are to be added in future this is also going to be a part and parcel of the requirements i want to so that is defined so like you know we need to see that like it doesn't have any kind of you know carcinogenic materials or chemicals which are used during the manufacture so Uh, of course the fire retardants is the most important uh, you know st- uh, requirements for uh, understanding this particular you know uh, standard and we need to see that like all the infrastructure for testing has adequate uh, which meets the things though it is simplified in this recent uh, updated standard in accordance with the bs uh, international standard uh, you know various uh, different clauses of course construction material of construction talks about the cover compound i think with, with there is a you know requirements are already is being uh, detailed out this time which uh, mr yojan talked about and also the fabric and uh, you know the uh, materials of construction including the plasti soils type of materials which are used should have a, you know uh, environmental friendliness and then the type of fabric which are used then the dimensions visual inspections thickness you know full thickness and tension elasticity these are the complete facilities which needs uh, you know not to talk about uh, uh, the fire resistance test has different um, you know uh, types of uh, fire resistance which we will see when we got into it the most important is the thickness uh, of course even you know Uh, when the manufacturing is done, so evenliness is to be important. Basically, you know, it should not have any kind of uneven thickness. So thickness is important because it also talks about, you know, the types of which are you know designed by most of the time it is ordered through a number of meters or the, you know, the diameters. But uh, the thickness is also important. So it is specified over here, and uh, then the full thickness breaking strength, which talks about, you know. uh the full strength breaking strength of the car- carcass material including uh, the cover uh more important here is that you know it should have a proper grip wedge grip or hydraulic grip which is supposed to hold the material while at the same otherwise the breaking will take place at different location so this is always a challenge for you know if you don't have proper grip of uh, machine it means the the sample in the thing basically so it, adequately it should be properly specified basically and then the tear strength is again is uh, uh, measured uh, you know uh, same tensile testing machines of course uh, you know uh, usually it's tearing strength in a normal machine with the uh, uh, is one of the requirement and the adversion is of course uh, wherein that basically you know uh, a more important how you know the preparation of the specimens and um, uh, you know uh, uh, and basically it's the 25 mm of uh, width and uh, you know nearly 6 6 inches or 12 inches of uh, this thing basically and then it should have a clean edges there should not be any thread should not be out all those things are more important if the pre- if the, s- the preparation is not good then there will be a variations in results so on a as we prepare the specimen so that it gives a consistent and uh, 
reproducible, repeatable test results basically. Uh, the electrical resistance is uh, another important test which is uh, usually done in million megometer. It should have an instrument uh, having, you know, uh, 10 for 6 ohms to 10 for 10 ohms. Uh, and of course, you know, 300 millimeter by 300 millimeter prepared specimens are prepared and it's, uh, you know, the electrical uh, electrode and then uh, measure this particular thing basically. So the uh, liquid type of agents are already contact agents are available and which is also to be applied for measuring this particular resistance uh, basically. So, this is also important test sometimes, uh, you know, uh, requirements are not met by some of the products basically. So, one has to see that it is adequately, you know, uh, uh, met actually. Then, uh, this is another, I think it's been put as a part of type approval test uh, nowadays in the, in the new version, wherein that basically, you know, um, external diameter of about 210 millimeter uh, drum steel drum is there and that the uh, you know the sample is loaded has shown in the you know uh, pulley and the, the picture basically and of course uh, and then uh, there is a rotation and the velocity of uh, 200 plus minus 5 revolutions per minute is a you know uh, speed of the big you know the the rotation of that uh, drum and so we are creating such a huge friction among the things under the tension of uh, this particular uh, in with the tension of about 343 newton load is applied and, uh, so what really expected here is under the tension and load conditions this is uh, creating um, huge friction. So, in fact, when we do this test, the entire smoke comes huge thing basically. So, these are really, you know, a uh, little sensitive test. One has to see that properly is managed and maintained. And so, it's, it's uh, you have to run the test and then find out, you know, uh, surface temperature of the drum, uh, whether what is the temperature is increased. And so, all those things are to be monitored basically. So it's really another, one of the important tests which uh, gives this idea about the like withstanding, uh, you know, uh, fireproof frictions during because it in application really it undergoes such kind of uh, situations. So there will be a heat generations uh, due to this heat as well and you know increasing temperature. So whether this belt is uh, withstanding such temperature and durations so. so is very important to you know understand that basically the next one is that uh, fire resistance it's a spread burner test which uh, you know uh, of course it's a chamber based test wherein that like you know spirit is used as uh, burning things in a small cabinet uh, you know uh, 25 mm width and 150 mm length which is used and for uh, of course it is cut in the parallel to the length of the belt and then you know so what we you know see that basically the time load up on each other in individual test pieces with covers intact and the average is reported um, what is the time in seconds basically so another test is that with and without cover basically so the next one is we remove the cover that is pvc plastic salts on the top of it and then again do that so just see that like now with support, without support of the cover, how much is the difference? So these are the time required to, you know, uh, visible flame as well as glow are to disappear after the time is uh, monitored and then reported actually. So this is also important test, which is uh, as a part of a fire resistance belt and uh, one has to regularly do that actually. So then the next one is a propane burner test, which uh, Mr. Eugene already has talked about. Of course, um, now it is a simplified, uh, you know, version. Uh, it's not like earlier it used to be a very big test house. Now it's a, um, a simplified one. So I think the standard uh, uh, is really uh, made in the laboratory as Mr. Eugene was talking about, probably, uh, uh, of course, uh, this is little costly 
in terms of testing things so it's kept as a part of uh, uh, you know um, type approval test but of course it's very important for design approval and other things basically uh, because it, it's really it represents that the true application of fire resistance so propane gas is you know to be handled very carefully and uh, proper regulation regulatory should be there So, so after that, we look into that whether any embrittlement, hardening, cracking, blistering, and other, uh, you know, any kind of damage happens. So these are the some of the things which are tested basically. Now, uh, after this, basically, you know, if, if there are any specific requirements which are likely to come up as a part of, uh, you know, uh, health hazards and other things, basically, so that needs to be incorporated as such. That's not being demanded, but in future, uh, you know, it, it is likely to come that like basically the material should have a compliance to with just like reach. So the chemicals, whatever is used should have no such uh, hazardous materials, ROHS, all those things. So that that is probably is, needs to be ensured that like obviously when you are exporting and those requirements are met, but whereas while in consuming in India is not yet defined. And that's going to be, should be a part and partial of, you know, the things basically in future, basically. So, and so whenever, when you design a material product, it should have that, you know, uh, 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 longevity as well as, you know, um, uh, materials ensured and sustainable materials ensured and safe and environmental safe materials should be that. With this, I'd like to thank the organizer for giving this opportunity to give me this opportunity for that. Thank you very much. It should have been physical uh, seminar. Uh, you, should, you, you would have seen our facilities. I welcome you to this uh, IRM Maria whenever you are in Mumbai, and uh, we welcome you to the facilities. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Saab, uh, for sharing this uh, beautiful presentation in the field of testing infrastructure in uh, India and also uh, offering the physical meeting at IRM Maria Mumbai. Thank you so much, sir. We will uh, plan something and we will uh, have a physical meeting, try to have a physical meeting in consultation with our chairman and uh, our members of the committee. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now, uh, member from DGMS uh, has not been joined, so I will share my presentation uh, from the IS side. <clears throat> We will see uh, some present status of standardization uh, in the field of conveyor belts and uh, standard formulation activities of uh, BIS and uh, BIS confirmed assessment schemes in the last. So we will go. I will share here uh, some brief history of BIS. As you can uh, see here, ISI uh, Indian Standards Institution which was established and founded in 1947. And then uh, journey begins from uh, here with the independence of India. And then uh, BIS Act, we uh, got BIS Act in 1986. Uh, here we have uh, statutory body status of BIS. And then uh, BIS Act in 2016. With this act, uh, BIS become the uh, national standard body of India. Uh, we have completed 75 year uh, service uh, to the nation. This is a, a very brief history of BIS. As you know, uh, BIS has pan India presence uh, in all the states. 
particularly in the uh, every state capital we have our offices branch offices and we have five uh, regional offices 41 branch offices uh, eight laboratory and uh, training institute at uh, nets noida so uh, you can see uh, you will find uh, our branch offices in uh, almost every major cities uh, here we have uh, core activities of bis as you know uh, we are involved in standardization conformity assessment which is isi mark uh, license scheme laboratory activities hall marking and training uh, and consumer protection uh, here uh, you can uh, see the standardization at various labels uh, like uh, international level we are very much involved with uh, iso iec uh, regional uh, SARS, SARS body uh, for standardization uh, national standards industry standards company standards societal and uh, personal standards <clears throat> here you can uh, see uh, we have two type of standards voluntary standards and uh, mandatory standards uh, like uh, if we say our conveyor belt uh, standard which is is3181 this is a voluntary standard that means uh, we are not forcing for uh, license though we have the uh, bis license uh, for these uh, products and uh, mandatory uh, st uh, mandatory standards are those standards who are brought uh, compulsory bis certification by the concerned uh, ministry government of india uh, st standard formulation process uh, we will see here the uh, project approach development of indian standards uh, here you see uh, proposal stage uh, in which we receive any uh, proposal for making the standard, uh, standard any new proposal in wip preparatory stage in which we prepare the uh, p draft then committee stage it will move to the committee like we have uh, in case of our conveyor belts uh, our sectional committee is uh, pgd 40 uh, approval stage then uh, publication stage uh, in the formulation uh, process we have uh, like we receive when we receive a proposal then it need to uh, establishment need that uh, whatever standard is uh, required need be uh, established then uh, we will have rounds of meeting of uh, our technical committee meetings then preparation of working <coughs> preliminary draft standard then circulation of working draft uh, preliminary draft and uh, wide circulation meetings of technical committees approval of draft because uh, many of committee members you know already uh, these processes <clears throat> and uh, here uh, you have preparation of uh, finalized copy approval of uh, final copy by chairman of technical committee uh, adoption of final copy then it go to uh, editing publish uh, standards then gadget notification status of standards whether it is voluntary or mandatory so our currently conveyor belts standards are uh, false under voluntary uh, standardization it may come under mandatory uh, certification and uh, it will under uh, mandatory certification because uh, concern ministry is uh, working on these subjects and government is uh, very much inclined towards uh, keeping uh, the standards under uh, mandatory certifications they may issue a quality control orders for the uh, conveyor belts in near future here you can say uh, stage wise uh, for uh, process like uh, in stage one we received uh, nwip new work item proposal in stage two uh, committee members prepared working draft uh, then the stage go for a preliminary draft uh, when this draft is finalized in the committee then it will move for the wide circulation for uh, public uh, comments uh, to the larger stakeholders and then uh, the draft will uh, finalize by the committee for making it uh, indian standards it will go from here publications and printing and then uh, here it will become uh, Indian standard. <clears throat> this is a brief illustration of uh, how a meeting happens and uh, how we approach 
for a uh, standard formulation. This is a consensus based approach. So here you can see some uh, illustrations. Uh, in the uh, standard formulation, uh, we involve uh, industry experts, technology experts, government bodies, regulators, government ministries, academia, laboratory, consumer organizations, everybody, uh, all stakeholders related to that uh, particular product. Here, uh, if you see, we have in BIS 15 division council, uh, more than 340 uh, sectional committees, panels, and uh, we have more than 10,000 uh, total experts in BIS. Uh, here you can see uh, technical uh, committee. We have a composition uh, in which uh, many leading manufacturers are member of the committees. And uh, like here for conveyor belt uh, sectional committee, we have a uh, chairman, uh, Mr. Apurva Khosar from NTPC. Uh, various PSU consulting firms represents this technical committee. BIS uh, is uh, coordinating with all these uh, stakeholders. You can see the illustrations here. This is a consensus uh, approach uh, based standard formulation. <clears throat> Here uh, you can uh, see the scope of uh, PGD-40 and uh, liaison of conveyor belt sectional committee PGD-40 with uh, ISO work. So here uh, formulation of standards and terminology, dimensional testing and other specification for pulleys belt including B belt and synchronous belt drives, belt used in conveyor elevator of various size and shapes. So uh, here our scope of the committee is mentioned here. Uh, we are talking about uh, here conveyor belts, but uh, B belts came to my notice here. So I'll uh, want to share in a small information about the B belts. B belts QCO quality control order is in the pipeline. It will come soon. Then uh, this uh, product will also become uh, mandatory. So. Uh, Concern Ministry already uh, notified this uh, for uh, QCO. So relevant stakeholders uh, may take a note on this and approach to BIS for uh, their comments inputs uh, related to this standard. Because uh, once the uh, QCO uh, will finally release, then it is mandatory to all the stakeholders to take the license from BIS uh, against this uh, IS2494, which is the B-Belt uh, for, for B belt. Uh, here uh, we have coordination uh, with ISO committee, which is ISO TC41. This is a uh, ISO technical committee. Our committee is representing for uh, pulley and belt, including B belts. Another committee is ISO TC41 SC1, which is for friction. And SC4 is synchronous belt drives. And uh, we have also ISO TC101, which is for continuous mechanical handling equipment in which we have P members and uh, ISO TC41 SC3, which is for conveyor belts. So these uh, are the ISO level technical committees. Uh, we are representing uh, in these committees through our uh, committee PGD40. So you can also have the opportunity to uh, take part in ISO uh, work through uh, this conveyor belt section committee. Here you can see uh, we have currently uh, running the uh, project under this committee. Uh, as you already uh, aware that IS3181 is under revision. Another uh, standard is IS9405, uh, which is the adoption of ISO1120, method of test for conveyor belt fasteners. This is uh, under revision. So uh, we are going to adopt this new version of this ISO1120. Another IS is 13775, part 1, 1993. Uh, this is also under revision. <clears throat> uh, here you can see uh, this uh, IS 1891 series, uh, different part 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, this standard is also under revision. These uh, drafts are with the uh, committee, and any interested participants. Uh, may comment in these drafts, uh, you need to just uh, send an email to at uh, pgd at the rate bis.gov.in. 
we will contact you and uh, we will discuss your comments in the committee and uh, committee will take appropriate decisions uh, here the list of uh, standards uh, related to conveyor belts we have uh, here a long list uh, related to conveyor belts you may have a look on these uh, standards and uh, relevant uh, stakeholders uh, you may approach to bis uh, through pgd we will let you know uh, if you need these standards for your own use and we are looking uh, from your side for comments because we are under process in uh, revision of these uh, standards so you can provide us the your comments inputs regarding uh, these so here we have 37 standards related to conveyor belts in which uh, few standards are adoption of iso standards and uh, most of the standards are indigenous standards which are published by our uh, technical committee pgd40 uh, from here uh, we will know something about uh, bis certification procedure as you know uh, bis act 2016 uh, here we have Certificate of Conformity, COC, and License to Use or Apply a Standard Mark. <clears throat> Here you can see in uh, Schedule 2, uh, in Scheme 1, we have uh, ISI License Provision. Uh, here, uh, second column, uh, we have Registration for Electronic Goods. This is uh, Registration for Electronic Goods. Uh, second is uh, grant of certificate of conformity for articles, goods and articles. And uh, last one is for uh, ISI mark for management systems like ISO 9001, ISO 14001, which is uh, quality, con quality management and environment management respectively. Uh, for BIS license, we have uh, two schemes option one and option two option one is for uh, normal procedure option two is for uh, simplified procedure in the normal procedure uh, license is granted after receipt of independent test report if sample drawn for more than one variety size grade product then license is uh, granted for all those varieties for which sample uh, passes uh, in normal procedure uh, we will not wait for the independent test report from the laboratory and the other option is option two that is for simplified procedure uh, in this uh, simplified procedure uh, test report is to be submitted by the applicant and a verification visit is paid uh, so uh, simplified procedure this is the fast procedure uh, we grant the license uh, immediately after verification visit and we do not uh, wait for the uh, verification sample re report from the lab here in normal procedure we will wait for the report from the uh, laboratory which we have draw as applicant sample. So uh, normal procedure uh, take uh, more time than simplified procedure. So these are for uh, getting the license from BIS. Certification scheme is operated through a network of 41 branch offices uh, set up across the country and five regional offices uh, oversee the work of uh, branches. Apex policy department in headquarter to establish uh, uniform policies and practices for product certification throughout the country. Uh, for uh, more information, you can visit uh, manakonline.in or uh, BIS website. Uh, if you visit the uh, BIS website, then you will see uh, this kind of uh, portal where you can uh, search uh, your product, know your uh, standards under the tab, know your standard. From here, you will uh, know the Indian standard related to your product. And from here, you can also uh, download the Indian standard and uh, many other information from here. If you uh, go further to this tab, then you see this uh, kind of uh, portal in which uh, if you type IS number, then you directly find the option for downloading of that particular IS and related information to uh, that uh, particular IS. And uh, by keyword, you can also search. If you do not know the uh, IS number of your product, by uh, clicking here by keyword, uh, if you put some keyword, relevant keyword, then you can also uh, you can search the IS number related to your product. Like here uh, is a small illustration for you. You can see this kind of tabs appearing uh, in this. 
from here you can uh, download free of cost any indian standard however you will be not be able to download uh, the iso standards free of cost because that are uh, copyright standards and that is a uh, uh, priced editions from here uh, you can have uh, information about the licenses gadget notifications laboratory uh, testing for that product uh, scheme of product manual and scheme of inspection and testing from here you have lot of information <clears throat> and in bis website you will also find the ministry department wise listing of the uh, standards uh, you can also use uh, bis care app this is very handy and very uh, useful application uh, you can download bis care app in your uh, mobile uh, with this application uh, you will be uh, immediately check any uh, isi mark product uh, regarding their uh, validity manufacturing details who uh, manufacturer manufactured this their license valid or not valid any kind of information related to uh, isi mark you can uh, check from uh, this bis uh, care app from this portal and any kind of hall marking also if you uh, just put their huid code it will gives you the uh, information about the authenticity of the uh, gold hall marking and details uh, from where it was marked and uh, in the middle you have the complaint sections uh, here you have uh, product under registration uh, scheme checking so uh, it's my request to every participant please uh, download this bis care app and explore this uh, this is very handy for you and uh, very good information uh, to you uh, you will uh, go for play store google play store from where you can just type bis care app you will find it uh, this is for the <clears throat> information that in the market uh, many misfit isi mark is there misuse of isi mark uh, you may see uh, like this isi mark is written and some what written as per and specification this is fake isi mark this is not the authenticate isi mark so if you see somewhere uh, written like this so you may complain in the application the necessary actions will be taken if you see uh, again this uh, someone written as fitted with element uh, this kind of isi this is again a missed normal uh, mark if someone uh, like this 551 this is also uh, misnomer this is not the actual is if someone write this isi as per isi this is also a fake isi mark and if someone uh, writes like this isi written isi number uh, in the top and do not return the license number uh, in the bottom then again it is not a valid isi mark a valid isi mark will contain isi mark is number at the top and cml number at the bottom cml number is that number which is issued by bis to a particular uh, company or organization from here uh, you can see some uh, useful links uh, bis websites know your standards subject wise list list under mandatory certification and the guidance uh, document on quality control orders from here uh, you can see our uh, dg message and directed general message so uh, this is a brief presentation from my side uh, please uh, write your uh, questions in the chat box uh, we will uh, take up in uh, in the question and answer session uh, start so you can start writing in the chat box thank you everybody for uh, patience listening uh, now we will uh, take some questions then can you check the questions in the chat box
ओके कमेंट्स पढ़ दो कुछ कमेंट ओके वी हैव रिसीव्ड कमेंट्स फ्रॉम मिस्टर भावेश भाव सर ही इज राइटिंग दैट आई एस टू वन सेवन वन टू एट सेवन एट आर एप्सुलेट आई एस कोड ऑफ फायर एक्सटिंग्विशर्स बट स्टिल इन इंडियन रेलवे वी फाउंड फायर एक्सटिंग्विशर्स विद ओल्ड आई एस ओके सो मिस्टर भावेश एक्चुअली दीज स्टैंडर्ड्स पर्टेन्स टू अदर कमिटी इन मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट बट इफ यू हैव द इंफॉर्मेशन दैट दीज स्टैंडर्ड्स गॉट अपसलीट आर बिड्रॉन इन द कमिटी then you uh, may inform the uh, concerned department and they will uh, issue a later kind of uh, thing or you inform that these standards got uh, withdrawn so uh, they will use the uh, new published standards and uh, you can also drop an email to us uh, elaborating the uh, more uh, indian standards and about this we will forward uh, your request to the concerned department that is uh, mechanical engineering department in bis if some uh, other participants have uh, any question uh, or comments you can comment in the chat box we will ask to uh, our speakers or uh, we will yes try to give uh, answers to you if they want to ask the questions themselves then they can raise their hands we will unmute them if any participant wants to ask question directly from the panelists you can raise your hands the webex portal so that we can unmute you for asking the question डॉक्टर राजकुमार सर आर यू आल्सो लुकिंग द वर्क इन द फायर फायर एक्सटिंग रिसर्च इन एम ई डी आई एम जस्ट चेकिंग विद यू विच वन एक्चुअली आई एस सर वन आवर पार्टिसिपेंट इज मिस्टर भावेश इज कंसर्न विद आई एस वन फाइव सिक्स एट थ्री and is 2171 these are uh, standards related to uh, fire extinguishers portable fire extinguishers and currently uh, used in uh, indian railway so his concern is that they are do such test i think there are some gaskets are involved in the fire extinguishers uh, that should have the resistance to such uh, things basically we 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 test uh, such things maybe uh mr bhavesh can send the mail uh, you know to us basically I, our team will take care uh, no problem i am just putting the website you know my email id for you yeah yeah please sir please sir and uh, mr rajesh choudhary is also concerned about uh, this fire extinguishers so please uh, note down the email id of uh, dr rajkumar sir he will give you the information and you also forward your uh, concerns in pgd at the rate bis.gov.in then we will forward to the uh, mechanical engineering department concerned department uh, does any lab has a mid scale propane test facility uh, dr raj kumar uh, this is uh, for you uh, uh, mr uh, pinaki sen who is our uh, member of uh, this pgd 40 committee uh, he is asking does any lab have mid scale propane test facility wo puch raha hai yeah 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 we can do that ओके पिनाकी सर आईआरएम प्री हैज फैसिलिटीज तो 
तो सर डॉक्टर राजकुमार सर आई आर एम एल एज मिड स्केल एंड सम लार्ज स्केल बोथ काइंड ऑफ फैसिलिटी बिकॉज इट हैज सम दिस earlier large scale was there now we discontinued that now we, we are we are first you know we established this mid scale one actually so okay thank you so much basically it's only at, you know this basically the basic facilities are remain same but only the the, the chamber size is reduced now basically so we, we we have both the things basically no problem oh, oh, okay thank you so much sir uh भावेश एंड राजेश चौधरी सर प्लीज नोट द ईमेल आईडी इनफो एट द रेट आई आर एम आर ए डॉट ओ आर जी एंड पोस्ट योर क्वेश्चन हियर डॉक्टर राजकुमार सर विल रिप्लाई अप्रोप्रिएटली फॉर योर क्वेरी एंड यू कैन आल्सो सी सी टू पी जी डी एट द रेट बी आई एस डॉट जी ओ वी डॉट इन If some uh, other participants want to uh, ask any question, uh, please post in the chat box or raise your hand for a question. We will uh, unmute you from uh, here. इनको एम नागेश्वरैया राव को कर सकते हैं क्या अनमेट एम नागेश्वरैया राव ओके कांटेक्ट करो या कुछ अगर बोलना चाहें तो डॉक्टर भावेश इज रेजिंग हैंड ओके ओके या या प्लीज अनम्यूट यस मिस्टर भावेश जी ओके थैंक यू सर एक्चुअली मुझे है ना स्टैंडर्ड एंड कोड पढ़ने में इंटरेस्ट है लास्ट छः साल से और मैं मेरा जो पूरा करियर रहा है वो फायर सेफ्टी से रिलेटेड रहा है पर जब हम लोग स्टैंडर्ड पढ़ते हैं ना तो बहुत सारे ऐसे स्टैंडर्ड आ रहे हैं कि जो 1980 या उसके पहले के बने हुए और आज की डेट में भी वही चल रहा है सो so, uh, हम लोग क्या सोच रहे हैं मिस्टर बी आई एस कमेटी जो है वो फायर सेफ्टी और इंडस्ट्रियल सेफ्टी के जो स्टैंडर्ड है करने के लिए क्या सोच रही है भावेश जी आपका बहुत अच्छा क्वेश्चन है और इसमें सभी टेक्निकल कमिटीज में बी की जो ओल्ड स्टैंडर्ड्स हैं इनको रिव्यू रिवाइज करने की मेहमत एक्सरसाइज चल रही है और इसमें बहुत सारे एक्सपर्ट्स लगे हुए हैं जो रिव्यू रिवाइज कर रहे हैं इंडस्ट्री लेबोरेटरी और अवर एक्सपर्ट्स जो हैं मेंबर्स और इस एफर्ट में हम लोग आप जैसे जो लीडिंग मैनुफैक्चरर्स हैं उनके भी कमेंट और ये दे सकते हैं तो ये एक्सरसाइज चल रही है ऑलरेडी तो अगर आपके कमेंट हैं इस फील्ड में तो आप बिल्कुल हमको बताइए आई आर एम एल एक्ट डॉक्टर साहब भेज सकते हैं तो okay. चल रही है पूरी तो आप इवन पी आई एस की टेक्निकल कमेटी में भी पार्टिसिपेट कर सकते हैं इसके लिए इसके लिए आप एक ईमेल आईडी डी डालें अपने ऑर्गेनाइजेशन तो कौन से ऑर्गेनाइजेशन से रिप्रेजेंट कर रहे हैं आप uh, मैं एक्चुअली एम्प्लॉय हूँ रानी विलमोर लिमिटेड में और मैं फायर सेफ्टी डिपार्टमेंट देख रहा हूँ यहाँ पे तो तो आप एक ईमेल डालिए तो आप आपको कमिटी मेंबर से भी ऑफर की जा सकती है अगर आप का इंटरेस्ट है इस फील्ड में तो आप भी हमारे अदर एक्सपर्ट्स मेंबर से कर सकते हैं भावेश जी थैंक यू सो मच भावेश जी फॉर थैंक यू सर इफ एनी अदर पार्टिसिपेंट वांट टू स्पीक अर आस्क अ क्वेश्चन यू कैन रेज अ हैंड डॉक्टर टी भट्टाचार्य डॉक्टर टी भट्टाचार्य ओके अनम्यूट हिम Dr. T. Bhattacharya, ask your question. Actually, he is uh, our committee member. Sir, 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 I have a question. You see, uh, in drum fixed, we have uh, in FR belts, like surface and underground application, we have drum fixed and test. Drum fixed and test, there are some standards. Uh, IS 1891 says 325 degree, and Canadian standard says 400 degree my question is is there any relevance of drum fixation test nowadays because msha american standard for underground mines 
they don't uh, say anything about drum fixation test. They have mainly fire resistance tests, uh, test, this gallery, gallery test and flame test. These are the two tests and electrical resistivity. Drum fixation test is not applicable in American standard also, MSHA. And I feel, uh, being in the conveyor field uh, for so many years, I don't feel any, feel any relevance with dump fiction test. Can we not rethink on this point? Why dump fiction test? When the, there is soft start, soft stop, and converse, is there any such condition really? Is there any chance of happening this condition when the belt will be stalled and the motor will go on running? And if a uh, belt really passes through the gallery test, even then, if it is drum fiction is there, then even then, is there any chance of catching fire? My opinion is the time has come to rethink on this point, drum fiction. And there are, uh, since many standards are just eliminating this drum fiction test, we can also eliminate. Okay, uh, thank you, sir, for asking the question. Uh, now we request Dr. Raj Kumar, sir. Uh, would you like to answer this question, uh, Dr. Raj Kumar, sir? Yeah, I think this needs deliberation in the standard. I agree with Mr. Bhattacharya, basically. We need to make it you know, more stringent uh, wherever possible, that's true. But we need to take the consensus of the, you know, the committee members uh, when, whenever we discuss that. Basically, I, I think uh, probably you know, uh, Eugen Z and others uh, experts are also there. Probably they can take their views also. And I agree that like you know, there are uh, you know wherever possible we should uh, try to align with the international standards. Basically, that's uh, uh, there should not be any ambiguity or uh, differences are there. So one cannot make two different products for. Uh, uh, similar standards, basically. Yes, thank you, Dr. Sir. Thank you. Uh, now we request uh, Dr. Uh, Eugen Pesley, sir. Would you like to share your views on this? Eugen Pesley, sir. Can you hear me? Ah, please. Yeah, this is regarding uh, drum friction test elimination, no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, that is a very important test for the fire retardant properties of uh, conveyor belts. So, in my view, these four tests for the fire test, it's called the fire test, that is the laboratory burner test, uh, electrical resistance, the drum friction, and the mid-scale propane burner test. These are all the four specify the characteristics of the fire retardant property of the conveyor belt. So these four are important in my view. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, Dr. T. Bhatta, sir, we will uh, discuss in more detail in our uh, stakeholders meetings and in our meetings. Uh, because okay, uh, in the webinar, it will take much we'll, more time. We'll discuss there in the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Th 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 thank you so much, sir. Uh, any other member or participant would like to ask any question? If you want to ask a question, please raise your hand. We will uh, unmute you from here. Okay. What is the proposed sample size mentioned for type test up to type 6? Okay, uh, we have uh, received a uh, comment from uh, Pinaki Sensor. Uh, what is the proposed size, uh, sampling size mentioned for type test up to type 6? So, uh, Pesley, sir, would you like to answer this question? Yeah, this is there in the IS3181. Yes. In the old system, also in the revised uh, proposed uh, IS31 revision, in both standard, it is there. It's specified up to type 6 uh, or uh, depends upon the types. Uh, it is there very well. 
ओके सर इट्स देयर इन द बोथ द स्टैंडर्ड्स करंट स्टैंडर्ड एंड द ड्राफ्ट आल्सो यस दैट ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच uh we have received a comment from uh, bala uh, he is asking uh, are you planning a webinar on the fire resistance requirement for railway applications metro trains uh, please inform this information uh, you can get from uh, from dr uh, rajkumar sir and from our uh, mechanical engineering department of bis so as you have already the email id of uh, irmra dr uh, rajkumar sir you can be touch be in with uh, dr rajkumar sir and uh, you can send a mail to uh, bis also uh, such right now there is no plan but uh, whenever there is a plan yeah right now plan yeah yeah but, but right now no plan but if you uh, something is planned then uh, it will always uh, go in bis uh, social media platforms and uh, to relevant stakeholders and if you register yourself uh, for this kind of interest then uh, you approach to bis uh, we will inform uh, when the uh, webinar will be scheduled in this uh, field because uh, bis is uh, regularly uh, conducting and uh, holding these kind of webinars very regularly so you will find and uh, if you have interest in this field you can also propose uh, that uh, we want a uh, uh, webinar on this field then uh, we can arrange so uh, i think uh, we are now move to webinar conclusion uh, dear participants as we come to the uh, end of this webinar on indian standards on fire resistant conveyor belts for underground mines i would like to express my sincere gratitude to all of you for making this event a successful event i would like to thank you our uh, esteemed speaker sri uh, apurva ghosh sir sri yusun pesli sir dr rajkumar sir and sri uh, bijabara patre is not here uh, for sharing their valuable and uh, expertise with us your insightful presentations have truly enriched our understanding of the uh, subject i also extend my heartfelt uh, thanks to our uh, ddg standardization sri sanjay pan sir for his inspiring inaugural address Uh, i would like to uh, express my gratitude to head of production and general engineering department pgd sri rajiv ranjan sir for his support in making this event possible finally i would like to thank all the members of conveyor belt sectional committee pgd party and uh, my colleague from bis for their valuable contribution towards the successful of this uh, webinar i hope that the knowledge and insights gained from this webinar will be useful to all the participants in their respective fields thank you all once again and have a good day thank you sir thank you everybody i would like to appreciate the management of eis for taking such a wonderful initiative basically for bringing all the stakeholders under one platform for such things basically it's really you know such kind of things are more importantly necessary to upgrade our standards and quality of product thank you very much once again thank you thank you very much